first of all, come on, let's do the thing. Please subscribe, do the like, and hit the bell. Thank you so much. In this video, I am going to do another What Works, and I use a form that I created called the Elements in Abstract Art. There's different things that we look for in the abstracts, and what helps me, especially when I get stuck or I'm just trying to figure out what's wrong with, with the painting I've painted, is I go back and I look, and I have some of these almost memorized, and the goal is to get some of this in your um it's like your memory that kind of stays there so when you're working on your painting some of this automatically happens to you you start to think about some of these uh design composition shapes you start to think about value which is so so critical and then color and line and texture i deal a lot with texture and texture does a lot for me in my paintings when I get to the point where I really want to make it my statement. And then I have on the second page, what will I change when I'm looking at a painting? If I'm sitting there looking at several, I will just jot down. And a place you can find this is I do have a PayHip account and the link will be below. I have a lot of good things in there. There's a lot of free things in there. And then there's a lot of things that I have uh, worked hard to develop. And this particular form is free out there. So come on out there and visit um, that. I don't remember doing a what's working and using my elements in abstract art on a black and white or a neutral painting before. So this can easy, either be very easy or it can be tricky. And as I go through this, and this is actually one of the paintings that I have up on the YouTube site, it can be very tricky when you're not dealing in a lot of color and you get stuck. And so when I pulled out my sheet, it was very easy for me to, to say, okay, here's some things that I can do. And it made a huge difference. So first of all, and I've turned this painting 90 degrees so we can look at it, but, but I, I would suggest to hang it the other way. But let's talk about design and composition. Is it interesting? Well, me as an abstract artist, that's all subjective to the person looking at it. You may not like my style of abstracts at all. Um, I have had some that don't like it, um, but I have had repeat customers that like my style and I like this painting. So that's what counts. So when I say, yes, it's interesting, I've achieved it to the point where I've achieved my personal style in my individualness in my painting. So yes, to me, this is interesting. Are there differences that keep you interested? And in this painting, yes. And we'll talk more about it later, but you've got large shapes, small shapes. You've got defined lines. You've got very muted lines. You've got very, you know, uh, lines uh, in the white that's just very thick. Then you've got very thin, chaotic, wild lines. So yes, it, it checks that off. Does it connect in style or are the styles fighting each other? Well, in this one, um, it's an overall look at the painting. So that would have to be a yes for me on here. Do they fight each other? No, actually I want them to kind of fight each other, which means they don't fight each other. They all go together. Are there things that allow the eye to go through the canvas? And if you were to look at the black, the very darkest value, you're gonna see there's a little bit in every quadrant. It takes you from the top of the painting down through the middle and just takes you um, through the painting and there's some of the dark value that takes you off the painting so the answer to me is yes on that one is are there opposites for interest and again yes there's opposites there's the thin line the, the thick line the smoothness the roughness there's a lot of opposites in this painting 
and value. When you're dealing with a neutral painting, you're going to have to have a lot of concentration on value. And that's when I got a little bit stuck initially in this painting because the value in this painting is what makes this painting because it is the black and white and neutrals. So value in art is so essential on how light or dark something is on a scale. If you look at one of those scales from white all the way to black, then there's a lot of the mid-tones. And I initially had a lot of mid-tones in this painting and that happens to me and that actually happens to so many artists. They get the mid-tones uh, down and then they have to go back and remember to add some of the light and dark because that's what the eye wants in contrast. If you look at this painting right away your eye goes either to the very dark but my eye goes to the very light white swatches I put on there. So the question is do I have lights and darks in this painting and yes and I had to add those last minute white swatches because I had a lot of the middle value and I had the dark but I didn't have the light and that's what really draws the eye to like the contrast in this particular painting. Is my eye drawn to shapes where light versus dark is the strongest contrast? And yes, there is a couple spots in there where I have the white and the dark, uh, the white and the black touching each other so that you can see the contrast. Or I might have it over there like on the left hand side of the painting a little bit away from each other but they're close enough to each other that the eye does balance between the light and the dark do i have quiet areas to help help me to stay focused at first i had too much quiet areas but yes the quiet areas and this is sometimes if you get a really chaotic painting and you can't figure out where the eye wants to look so you may want to as i call veil some areas back which that's lightly covering some areas not all the way but cover enough and if you go back and look at the video for how i created this i used a a uh, tool a, like a smoothing tool a, a catalyst that pushed the paint uh, thin the paint down to create more of a quiet area so some of my dynamic areas could have more of a presence in this painting so color well there's not a lot of color in here but then again the color are the the black and the white and a little bit of the beiges and then the grays that are created from the mixture of the painting so again there is nothing to talk about when it comes to complementary colors or a limited palette this is actually a very limited palette so we're going to go on to line now this is a big one for me because I love line. I don't necessarily have a lot of straight line in my painting, but adding straight lines to a lot of my very free flowing lines is what I need to do sometimes in my painting. So uh, is there enough contrast or interest in the lines in the painting? And some I have very chaotic down in the right side and the bottom, very chaotic with a thin rigger brush or a brush that I held way back at the tip. And then on the left hand side on the top, I still have the chaotic marks, but they're more free flowing and more open. And then I have thick lines made on purpose with a palette knife um, to give it extreme. And I think that's what I love the most about this painting is those thick lines and then the very uh, chaotic thin lines and the contrast between the two. Do I have um, like contrast, like thick versus thin, neat and messy, curved and straight? And again, when I got to the end of this painting, that's what I needed to add in this painting was I had a lot of the very free flowing curved by adding in those white marks with the big thick brush strokes of the palette knife or palette knife strokes. And then going over on the right on the top there in this painting, adding the leftover in lines gave it a more structured look, look um, when the painting was an overall free kind of flowing type of marks on the painting. Do I have hard and soft edges? Again, those last white marks that I added with the palette knife gave me some hard edges. You can even see a lift on the painting 
on the one mark in the middle. And then I added the three marks and one I spread out and then scraped through it. They were all necessary to make this painting pop as opposed to everything looking the same within the painting. Do some of my lines go off the edge of the canvas or are they all contained? Sometimes you want marks like that big black mark on the right hand side to go off the canvas and there's some other areas where it goes off the canvas. You want some times to keep things contained but other times you want the marks to go off to continue the, the hugeness of this painting. And of course texture which is one of my favorites. I add a lot of texture and since this painting had a lot of smoothness because of the way I created it Adding those last marks on there added a physical texture. You can look at it and there was a lot of visual texture, but adding that thick white gave it the texture that I needed that was um, more of a physical texture. So all in all, what would I change with this painting? I already did the changes. If I had showed you this painting, probably 15 minutes prior to my ending when before I added the white I would have said yes the things I needed to change was some more value some more texture and an overall um, more differentiation in the lines so I hope you've enjoyed this video I hope these are helpful to you I just don't remember doing a um, a neutral or a black and white so I thought I would um, do one for you and if you haven't seen this particular video uh, in the creation it's uh, probably like three or four actually it's, it's now because I'm still on vacation and I recorded this ahead of time but it's probably like six or so back so again thank you very much for being a part of my journey with me I am actually not showing my face i put on some sea serum this is probably just too much information but um i learned that i am allergic to that sea serum and my um, eyes got swollen so they're almost back to normal but i haven't been showing my face in the videos because um i'm not irritating them anymore with mascara and stuff but it's the paintings you wanted to see, not me anyway. So thank you for being here. Again, please do a thumbs up, a like. Leave a comment as to, do you do black and white paintings? Do you do neutrals? Have you tried neutrals? And if there's any questions you have or comments, leave them down below. I will be um, enjoying looking at the comments uh, while I'm visiting my family and my dad and um, I really would um, love to to have the, the conversation with you so take care and until next time thank you